Hi, my name is Brennan Baker, BB Miniatures, and welcome to my latest video. In this part one tutorial, we will be looking to paint up this female paladin hero from Games Workshop's Curse City. <laughs> Sorry, I've forgotten her name in the game, but the model is right in front of you. We will be starting off with her dark steel armor in this tutorial and with the techniques and recipes in order to achieve this look. The entire model will start with a black undercoat, which I've used uh, AK's interactive black primer for that matte finish. It just really helps me see the light placements better, and I've just left the head off to paint separately for easier access and a future tutorial. I hope you enjoy and you find this part one tutorial informative. Stick around till the end, and with more information about the Pro Palette, where you can join me and the rest of the community in more tutorials and viewing the rest of the process in upcoming videos. Of course, that is dependent on when you watch this on YouTube. And of course, if you enjoy this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already to be sure not to miss my future content. As well as I'd love to hear from each and every one of you about leaving comments and our questions about the painting process. Other than that, much love and enjoy. Okay, starting off, uh, we'll take a look at the palette on the left. If you take a look at the three column painting or three column paints at the very bottom we have eclipse gray and then above that is a bearing blue and then on top of that is a white to the left of the eclipse gray is uh black and at right at the beginning we're just mixing some black and eclipse gray together to get ourselves a very very dark gray and we are just going to apply that pretty much on all the armor panels now, instead of just completely slapping it down 100% and covering all the nooks and crannies, what I'm doing here is I'm still spreading the paint along the entire surface. Keep in mind, I did thin this down just a little bit, adding a little bit of water in here just so the, um, the paint kind of flows much nicer in the brush. And I'm just painting in all the armor panels, but I'm trying not to like push the brush into the absolute recesses of all the armor panels. So I just want to leave a little bit, you know, more of that pure black right or, you know, let the primer um, stay right in the absolute recesses of this. It's not really necessary, um, but I do find just having a little bit of control and even though that I'm just putting down a base layer, just getting a little bit of intent as well as while I'm doing this, um, you know, this first base coat here. Of course, I'm just kind of like taking a look at the miniature and kind of like planning my way through and looking at the various volumes and, um, you know, just getting a read for the miniature. This is essentially like your first touch of the model. So, um, you know, as you as you progress and build the layers like here, you'll start to get to know it a little bit more. Now, this is where we're going to really start placing our our first uh, our first lights. So I'm just grabbing some of the, um, the eclipse gray and just adding in just a touch of bearing blue, mixing on the palette there. I know it's kind of tricky um, with the palette that uh, you know it looks a little sometimes the the wet paint on the palette and the camera looks a little bit shiny, but uh, just above there um, there's some uh, color swatches for you guys. So it's a, bit, a little bit easier to match if you don't, not using these uh, these paints. All the colors here, by the way, are from scale 75. But um, any other like acrylic miniature paint will do if you're gonna use like Vallejo or um, even like Chimera or uh, Games Workshop, etc., etc. Now, here's where we're gonna start placing uh, the highlights. We're gonna be a little more, uh, not just slapping them down like in the first layer here. Now, what I wanna to try to do is we're just like painting on volumes. So we're not just, uh, you know, not, there's no just pure, just edge highlighting here. We're gonna be tracing on the volumes and we're looking at all the volumes that are going to uh, be visible from our general light source, which is, we're just gonna, we're pretty much making this a little more of a general like zenithal light. But of course, when we're taking a look at all the various shapes on the model, we also want to um, give volumes 
to each of the surfaces that um, closest relate to uh, the, the, the generic shape that we're, we're painting. So like if you take a look at the kneecap, um, the knees uh, on ball joints, they most represent spheres. So trying to uh, picking a the apex of the sphere and building all the light up towards that, which you can see. In our panels, such as like the legs and stuff like that, what we're really looking for is um, you're really looking for curves. And the easiest place to start placing highlights is mostly on the apex of each of the curves. So you have a curved area and, you know, if you're guiding a, a general light direction that's coming from above and a bit on an angle, like uh, let's just say like a 45 degree angle from above, we want to, you know, gravitate um, placing the lights on the uh, the closest um, apex or the closest curve that um, that's the closest distance between the light source and, and the material. This is why like painting curved objects or curved armor is a lot more fun in NM rather than just like pure flat panels. A lot of flat panels can get, you know, quite boring. <laughs> but um, next off, we're just mixing up in the palette here. I'm just making a secondary highlight color. So as we start building up, I add um, a little bit more bearing blue into the mix. Still trying to keep it very desaturated. You know, we don't want I'd never actually end up using pure bearing blue. Um, we will get to a value and then start adding white into it. Um, it may not look like it on the, the palette. Sometimes seeing the color separately, it looks like the, the color is very strong. But due to the uh, due to the values that we're going to be placing on the miniature and a little bit of the dilution that we're using, we're generally trying to make softer marks and there is actually not a lot of color in um, in the color in the paint that we're using it's very desaturated so as it gets onto the model we're gonna start to you know it's gonna look fairly faded there's not a lot of strong color within the uh, within our brush that we're using right now now in regards to like painting these like little shape or the, the shapes that we're going to be doing, of course I'm building up these highlights, but sometimes, you know, if you see, you can see a little like trail off that little, little shtick of a highlight that's, you know, trailing off the side on the kneecap, etc., etc. These are just like, they're, they're honestly just made up, <laughs> you know, there's, there's no like formulaic science that's really going behind here. What I'm actually doing here is like, I actually, you know, I filled it in. Um, the whole idea is when, especially trying to, you know, creating NNM and trying to create um, these highlights is you want to, you know, I'm still trying to base it off the general shape, but at times, sometimes, at times I'll try to split the light into like two smaller pieces or, you know, one larger, one smaller, making it a little bit irregular. And that's part of like the, the fun part with like NNM is the, the sketching phase is, as I would call it here, is, you know, just drawing in these highlights and trying to find out some, you know, interesting shapes to make the, the metal not to look too um, robotic or not robotic, but um, too precise. I think that especially since we're dealing with like a reflective material, you got to remember that this is, you know, it it's reflecting the environment um and in this video you know we're not going to get into like extreme details you know painting like a, a explosions or like a battlefield or a scene or you know other things in the uh, environment we're not going to make uh this going to be that much of a mirrored image but to you know get the to get the shapes of these highlights is, is it's got to be it helps to be a little bit irregular it makes it more I think it makes it look a little more natural and um, actually it may give you a little bit less of a headache <laughs> when you're painting it because um, you know NM can get sometimes like quite intense in terms of you know uh, painting the, the amount of reflections and stuff that some people you know you might think you need to do but being a little bit loose just kind of helps um, with the shape and distribution and actually make it look more natural.
So after sketching in the first few highlights, now I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. This is what I call a bridge. So I've taken the the, the two stages of uh, the different highlights and I've mixed them together to create a value stage that's in between. And what I'm doing here is um, just with a little more dilution. So um, yeah, so the paint with the dilution that we are using um, I always add some water into here. So in here, we're almost at a 50-50, almost a 50-50 dilution. And the nice thing is about working with these transparencies, especially on this bridge is, well, just like the name implies, I'm trying to bridge two areas or two values of paint and bring them closer together. So it's a softer transition. I'm not looking for like a finished blend here, not at all. I'm just looking to get some of that value in there in between and soften the transition between the the dark uh, the dark first coat of pretty much like eclipse gray and then what we're building up with the you know with the bearing blue mix and um you know being uh, trying to be like fairly careful and put them in as you see here as i'm trying to leave like a little bit of a gap of like the max, like the the, sha the absolute shadow, the eclipse gray and black mixture, just leaving little bits to show. The more of like the shadow uh, or the, the darkest mixture you leave, um, you know, the darker the scene it'll be, or also like the darker the metal that you want to appear. And it's the opposite true is, you know, if we make the highlights bigger, of course, it just looks more illuminated. Now with the, now with our, um, our, <laughs> our uh, eclipse gray and, and black, I started to mix a glaze into here. So this is around like four or like, about like five parts water to one part paint. I just mixed a little bit on the palette here. And what I'm doing is I'm carefully placing this glaze in the shadow areas and in the transition. So I'm almost like going over a part of the the bridge layer that I just put in and pulling the brush down into the shadow. Now it's also like fairly important to know the, the direction of the brush of the stroke. I'm always trying to pull this into um, its home color. So the home color here is the, the almost the, the eclipse gray and black. So the direction of my brush will go in that direction. It'll start outwards and pull into the shadow. This also allows like a little bit of extra paint that gets deposited at the end of your stroke as you lift your brush up. Um, so like most of the pigment gets um, pushed into the shadow, much like like kind of like manipulating this puzzle up, uh, not puzzle, puddle of paint. So with the bridge and the glaze stage going up, now I'm mixing up the highlights. So this is where I just start adding in white into the into the, the mixture here. As you can see, um, we're actually you know far from white. Now this is the thing that can start to trick a lot of people when they start painting NM is that they will see it being painted in this stage and they'll think what they'll they'll see with the contrast, they'll think that you're applying white, just white. Now, it's easy to think that is because, especially as we start painting this on the model, sorry for a little bit of the focus hunt there. Um, as I was saying, it's easy to think that this could be almost white, um, but don't mistake it for it. It's just because on the model itself, you're seeing so much uh, contrast all you know, all in the same frame, pretty much, or in the, you know, very close to each other. So this cut, the this uh, this this tone here really does look very very bright. But as you saw from the the palette and the swatch that I was showing, it's far from it. So um, a really good thing to, especially when you're doing this for the first time, is make the color and just put down like pretty much like a single dot. Put down one dot at the very apex where the max highlight or the the center of the highlight should be just use the knee it's probably the easiest one and also once you put that dot down let it dry you know i know it sounds boring saying to watch paint dry but really it's a really good habit to get into especially if you're doing this at the start 
The other thing, the reason for that is one, you want to check the value of it, but also more importantly, check the value of it when it dries. If you've noticed the first, um, when I put down this, um, when I put down this mixture in the highlights, when the paint is wet, it looks brighter. And if you're always going to try to judge the value of the, uh, of the area that you're painting on wet paint, um, you're going to run into a lot of frustrating problems because you think <laughs> that, oh, it's way too bright. You might actually like abandon it. You might go, oh no, that's too, too bright. And then, uh, you know, you go to correct it and then you look back, you're like, what, why does it look so much duller? And that's because like, you know, you got to let the paint dry. And especially at this stage, I know it's, um, it, it changes quite a bit. Or at least I think so. Um, and if you can see, you should be able to observe that, that, um, you know, the, the wet paint looks a lot stronger than it is dry. So, you know, that'll that definitely help you avoid a lot of, um, you know, future frustrations or, you know, just creating the, the right value that could possibly be one of the, the trickier parts with, uh, N and M, especially for, um, newer painters, or if you're more used to painting purely out of bottles so if you're like doing this but you purchased <laughs> you know uh, all the colors from like ak or vallejo and you're purchasing all the intermediate grays um that could be uh you know that that could be a potential pitfall that you could fall into because you might not be used to mixing them all together but as you can see, like with the, the general like highlights that I've painted now, it's just like a, it's just like more starting with progression. So I'm, you know, increasing the value in the area. And for the most part, you know, I'm respecting the boundary that I can, but you shouldn't be afraid to completely go over the previous layer with the, with little charge that's in your brush. So that's the amount of paint that you're picking up. And with the dilution of the paint that we have here, we're actually making, you know, a, a fairly like more transparent marks. These are not 100% opaque marks at all. And to get a nice and with like this, this softer marks, you know, we get softer edges on every single brush stroke that we do. So, um, you know, they don't uh, <laughs> they they don't leave such a a strong border on them. The nice thing is about painting with like this transparency here is that every time you put a subsequent layer of the same, um, that area that you paint gains in opacity. So the color or the area they're painting gets stronger, it gets more opaque, and you see less of the previous color that is showing through underneath. After, after the highlight, now you can see that I am doing a second bridge. So I'm just getting the, <laughs> the, the previous layer that I did and just adding a little bit of that, um, a little bit of the, the color that we may have lost when I was painting these highlights. So yeah, you know, sometimes in a stage I will either accidentally, or maybe I think that I want to increase the light, but it, in some areas that I'm looking, I'm looking to grab a little bit more of that, of the, of that other mid-tone in there. And if you can see, I'm just aiming right on the, the line that separates the two layers and just uh, using small strokes and placing the paint in there. Um, a short, like speaking of brushes, <laughs> um, if you can see, it's pretty important to have like a nice, like sharp brush uh, for this. I find, uh, you know, a good, a good, a good brush with a good tip is really important. I'm using right now an Artis Opus and Artis Opus, actually a size three. <laughs> um, most of the time I've been using like size ones or like size zeros. But for this, uh, for this miniature, the majority of it is actually painted in a size three. And I thought it was a little bit overkill, <laughs> but um, actually this brush, it, it just comes to such a good point, but I combine that with like a larger belly of the brush. So it allows me to paint longer without reloading the paint, which is quite nice, especially for time. 
you know, this actually um, didn't, uh, this miniature in total didn't take as long as I, as I thought I would. And, um, you know, that I uh, was saving like little bits of time by using a, a, a larger brush, but it still comes to a very, very good point. So, you know, I keep this one in, in good condition. You know, I'm not just using it to like slap paint. I'm not using it to dry brush or using it to like, you know, try to cram into like, you know, models have like a million little tiny little bits of detail, <laughs> um, much like uh, maybe maybe a, a surface that has like a ton of scales and, and things like that, or a rougher. I'll use a more beat brush for that. But I, I was quite amazed actually to, to know that I could use a, a size three on such, on such small, <laughs> on Games Workshop miniatures on like humanoid size figures and feel really comfortable with it. Sorry, back to the painting. Um, as you can see, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm going back with uh, another highlight and um, just replacing those last. So, you know, anytime it's a bit of like a back and forth process, you notice I put down some, like I put down a highlight and then if I lost some of the previous transition or I want to see more of a, a, a transition or more of a gradient, a fade, I will come in back either with the previous color or make a bridge and paint in uh, a small transition mark. And then I'm going back with the highlight again to uh, reiterate and reshape, and give a more of a, a, a finer touch. Now again, I'm bringing in more light. So now you can see the the value is going pretty, pretty, uh, pretty light, and it's it's pretty opaque too. You know, it's not um, it's not a strong blue at all. This is um, even like less, like a baby blue has more blue. This one has a, a lot less. And the dilution here now, now I'm really getting into as I go up in highlights. Um, generally, my dilution gets thinner and thinner as. Um, you know, we're making smaller and smaller highlights and I don't want them to be, I want the transitions to be nice and soft. So that's where my paint dilution gets thinner and thinner because I want to make weaker and weaker marks. And um, it's easy enough if I need a stronger mark, I just do, I just paint over the previous area with the same highlight. That way I have real good um, control over how opaque an area is and it, it just uh, allows me to like uh, gradually and softly build up the light that I want. I start picking out a little more of the, the edge highlights too much. Don't forget like little like rivet details and such. <laughs> What's even nicer is you can see like the highlights that are close down to the bottom of his feet, I didn't bring up nearly as bright. And now when I'm going in with the, this lighter highlight tone with the such transparency of the paint, <laughs> if you notice, I apply the highlight and then it'll actually start to really fade. So you'll get it won't be nearly as intense as like, let's say the one that we built on the knee because we've done several, several, several layers of it on the knee there. So um, the paint will definitely be a lot more opaque and rightfully so, you know, it's such a larger item and it's a uh, much more upwards facing towards the light. Here I'm just taking the base um, shadow color that we created, like a, a black with a little bit of that eclipse gray. And I just like want to like clean up a bit of the outline and a bit of the the shadow work. We're almost like we're getting to the more of the closing stages and you can do this cleanup literally at any time if you feel that you need to, especially if you, you know something that you've painted isn't really doing the shape. But sometimes I do it to give myself a little bit of a break of highlighting and, and draw on a little bit of shadows to see to really see the shape and if I if I like it or not. 
Um, one of the parts in the armor here, there's many parts of it here, is actually the bottom edge of these plates. Now these plates don't just come to a, a point, it's actually the bottom of the plate's like a rectangle. So it's also, um, it's also important to get that little bit of extra detail that you want to be able to illustrate that there's a flat, <laughs> a flat plane on this that's facing downwards. And these like secondary reflections, all I do is I just make them uh, smaller than the primary ones. That's important, you know, unless our light source was coming from below and that's like the bigger, the brighter light. <laughs> But um, since these uh, since these planes are kind of you're facing downwards, but I still want to have a little bit of light reflection to really you know show the detail, as well as like realistically you know light's going to be like rebounding, so um, either off his knee or you know on his, um, his uh, the cloth or the, even just the ground or any other areas on the body, we want to show a little bit. This is where you can get a little bit like irregular. Um, you can do that anyway, everywhere through, especially if you want a really like beaten up looking metal with all these like, you know, like little thin lines, cuts and lines and stuff. But here I'm putting them in this highlighting stage right now. And some of them are like barely even visible. A really good, uh, really good uh, way to do that also is as you're painting and you're lose, you're removing paint out of your brush, you can use a really weak brush loaded to do these last few lines that hardly leave any mark at all. All right, now to the pretty much we're getting to like the max lights and of course um, we're adding a little bit of warmth to these lights now so we've been doing a lot of like the bearing blue so it doesn't leave the armor a little bit cool now we're adding um, tenerary yellow into the mix this is equal this is a very close equivalent to like ice yellow from Vallejo pretty much um, but of course it's in, in scale 75 which I really like and I'm just mixing that along with a little bit of the bearing blue, some white, and some tenary layo to give my uh, max highlights onto here. You can also see on the miniature that I went around and did the other parts of the armor. So I'm doing this as like the, the final highlighting stage, pretty much. And what I'm going to do here, of course, I'm just aiming at the very, very apexes of the light, making sure that these are the ones that are facing, of course, upwards. So, you know, don't. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily do these these max lights on secondary reflections that are not facing up towards the light. Um, and make sure these are like, um, well, for this effect, you know, to make them fairly small, <laughs> you know, um, you can make them big, but that would denounce like a really, really bright and light source. So, but um, I want to create them uh, really small, especially since with, you know, the shinier the object is, generally the highlights are smaller. And just going to pick on these a little bit of max light. Don't, uh, you don't have to like, or don't be, fall into like, you have to paint every single edge and every single point with these. Um, but uh, even if you do, like you saw the one on the leg there, it's just like, it's literally just a thought, <laughs> just a little thought. I know it doesn't make, uh, you know, it doesn't really make much. Um, it doesn't look like it does much, but the overall composition, it, it'll, um, you know, just give you that little extra, little extra finish. Probably for like a tabletop miniature, <laughs> um, you, you could do it if you want, or even paint these to this standard. If you were gonna do like a tabletop miniature, I would think um, you could probably skip all the, the bridge the bridge sections and you can just do up layering and yeah you won't get the same finish but you know you, you save time <laughs> and uh for a tabletop miniature you know you got to make the blend look more like better when it's you know arm's length and more away and definitely like you know you're seeing this through a hundred uh, a 105 millimeter lens so <laughs> it's really zoomed in so you could really see all the marks of course it's you know i, I want to do it so you guys can see and learn but um if you were to hold this at like you know arm's length away or you know on the tabletop you know th this looks it, you 
this looks more than blended enough and even if we skipped all the the the, the bridge and the, uh, the the glazing stage of the shadow it would still look great um sorry what you saw what you saw me do earlier a little swash on the thumb is it's just to give you an idea a good idea and a visual indicator on like how thin this paint actually is when it comes off the brush and again like i'm literally just loading the very tip of the brush you know i'm not no not there's no like excess paint coming off or anything i'm not trying to blob the paint on and just trying to use like the lightest uh, the the softest touch you you can um brush pressure does play a role into like how much paint gets deposited so you know i like to say to all of my students is like if you want to really uh, a light and a soft touch kind of like pretend that you you want to tickle the model like you want to touch the model without it knowing that you touched it even though you know <laughs> model can't feel anything but if you were to like take a paintbrush and like you know try to like paint a part of like your finger try to do it without you even be able to feel the bristle that kind of an idea So I decided to leave this part in, um, in terms of like, you get to see where some of these other highlights that I'm placing them in. Um, and also it gives you, um, a good little tour of like how I have illustrated the various, uh, the various shapes on the rest of the model. You can see like the, the, the apex curves that I've, I've captured to, to get. Um, the lighting placement down so for these volumes. Even a good tip for doing these max points is, you know, take a little bit of, uh, just take a little bit of time and like just slow down a little bit. It's very easy to like over highlight everything or, um, you know, place too much yellow into, into your metal unless you consciously want to do that. But for me personally, I really like these last stages. It's, it's kind of like the, the, the victory lap and, um, you just, taking your time and just adding these little extra little extra like uh, flares of warm color especially onto this this cooler armor to really um, help make it a little more alive but again yeah just you know no rush and just uh, you know place them down um, as you see fit and just <laughs> enjoy the last little bit Okay, so this last stage actually came as a as a post thought, and what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing some contrast paint from uh, Games Workshop, and I was doing this on the fur, so you actually see there's other parts of the model that I've done. But what I'm doing here is with this um, this Gorgon fur, I think it's called. Um, it'll be the in the description. Um, Games Workshop names, I can never remember them. <laughs> But what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing uh, very similar to how we did that dark glaze um, with the 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 black and uh, eclipse gray mixture. But now I'm applying the contrast paint, this brownish contrast paint, into the shadows as well. This contrast paint is actually mixed like 50-50, so fi like half uh, one part contrast to one part contrast medium. And then I also added a few drops of water in there to, you know, thin it out even more. Um, but the reason why I want to put this in here is because I want to add a little bit more color into the shadow. In this case, I'm adding in like this brownish, uh, this brown tone into there. And I think that also helps by giving a little more of um, 
you know a, a richer a richer warm tone in the shadows so we get this um, temperature sandwich of like these warmer shadows and then a, a cooler uh, cooler mid-tones and lights from the blue and then at that final little highlight touch that we just went through was with like the yellow to uh, you know help uh, give it a little bit of a hint of warm again and as well as putting this kind of like brownish in the shadows um, will also help with like um, just give a little bit of a view of like some ground reflection now in this one we didn't get into you know more complicated and more um, you know even more reflective material but I thought that you know this adds just a little bit of rich richness it's optional and actually I would have mostly done this before I've done the max highlights <laughs> just so um, I run a, res a, a less risk of uh, corrupting my highlights because as you can see I have to be actually fairly careful not to get them anywhere on the highlights if this this contrast paint hits the highlight oh man you gotta do all the you gotta do all the max highlights again is because this this color will the, this contrast paint will completely corrupt the highlight and dull it down like like mad so um, but you know that's part of the, the the live process and that's what happened so I was like okay gonna do this now and just be a little bit extra careful if you do end up doing it at this stage um, just very watch out very carefully of the charge in the brush you do not want to like hit an area and just have it pool out it should not pool out and get into the recesses so to really help control that once you pick up some paint really have a paper towel wipe off the excess so you only have the paint that's within the bristles if you see like if you see a lot of paint on the excess like a big sheath of, of paint on the excess of your brush and it looks a little bit swollen big sign you have way too much paint in your brush so lower your charge and uh you know have fun and, and be careful but it does give a really cool look as well as um uh, you know, adds a little bit of more um, satin shine into your shadows, which in turn also makes them look deeper. So a little bit of an extra win-win. And that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, uh, please like and subscribe as well as uh, leave a comment with uh, your notes or any questions that you may have. And I'll be happy to answer them the best I can. If you want to catch the remaining parts of this miniature tutorial, um, consider becoming a member of the Pro Palette. This is where uh, you can watch all the upcoming tutorials of this, as well as having full access to over 100 plus hours of painting tutorials and, and other things from Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, The Horus Heresy, and more. Also, all of my members also have access to my Discord where you can join your uh, you can also join your peers as well as get full feedback on your works from me. So till the next one. Thanks and happy painting.